We'll see to find out. That is going to be the question that we all want answers to. Thank you again, Abstract. We'll catch up with you later as we jump straight into game number two. RSG Philippines on the blue side currently one game up and already causing a bit of havoc in the mid lane against Liquid on the red side. See, this is surprising, right? Because usually in this kind of situation and in this kind of lane, we would expect that Sanji on the Zask would have a little bit more room to work with and a little bit better of a wave clear, but it looks like Sanji is the one that's getting caught quite behind, and this is a really good start to the game here for RSG Philippines. I think the first thing that really caught my eye as we entered the Land of Dawn and as we entered the portal was three purifies given over for RSGPH. That's a lot of respect, and they understand that JP is going to be able to find these moments, but a lot of aggression already in the bottom side of the uh, map. Carl TZ taking a lot of damage. He'll hit level four first. This health drops low, no more resources on RSG, so not able to punish that, and that means Carl will have that EXP lead straight away. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a problem, right? What, what's RSGPH's? idea here with their drafts. Are they waiting for that level 4 power spike? Are they going to let this neutral objective go? Because if that's the case, then this is fine. Are they looking for more kills? If that's the case, then that's fine. But if they're looking for neutral objective takes, I think Irad needs to catch up a lot quicker because Carl TZ will have a better time when it comes down to it. But look at these predictions. 86% for TLPH. So we can already conclude that this has been a huge upset. Yeah, a lot of the audience agreed with us in saying that that Liquid should have the better chances here. RSG definitely catching everyone off guard, but a nice freeze, great combo onto the Tig Real. JP dropping so low, and that is going to be first blood given to Irad, a nice three man gank. Amazing, amazing way to start this off because now they're going to have to buy a little bit more time for JP to come back into the game and to help set up for this net neutral objective take. Oh, and the fact that he actually utilized his Purify there. So that's a big resource spent, and that's a big resource that they desperately need when they want to go in for these 5v5 to get that neutral objective. This puts RSG Philippines in a better position in that regard. It means they don't have to worry about the Flicker Implosion for a little bit, but they do still need to contest the Turtle because you can see Irad actually trying to go for some farm, which means Liquid are currently in control of it. Penalty Zone comes in, Carl gets the Turtle. Curse of Blood comes out on three members. Actually, Bridget Frost doing a lot of damage. Sanji forced to jump out of his ultimate, dropping real low on Carl TZ as well. He'll be able to get out alive, and RSG will immediately back off. I don't think they need to re-engage this. Aww. Ooh, Irad gets caught, Earth Shattered. Do they want Sand? Bird. He still has his ult, so yeah, probably not. Okay, that was a one-for-one -one trade, right? Team Liquid PH, they were able to get that turtle in the hands of Carl TZ, who had a EXP lead over. But what's going on in the top side there? Is Sanford in trouble? Yeah, it's a 1v2 here, but he has no primal way. wrath. We know how strong Edith is when you got that full wrath. Nibor and Aqua actually both have to back off and recall against Sanford alone. Oh, wow. That's a baby 40 oh. for you. Still able to get out of there as well. The outplays come Coming in, buys them a little bit more time as TLPH, they focus their, you know, attentions elsewhere here. I think they're looking for a better trade in the bottom side, trying to help Cutie get to that power spike quicker. You know Sanford definitely felt good about that one though. <laughs> Considering what happened to them in game one, that's a little bit of, uh, of payback over to RSG Philippines. And now four minutes in, we can see that the network difference is not that high, which looks a lot better for Liquid, considering their performance so far. Yeah, I would agree, right? TLPH, they're putting up a fight here. They understand the winning conditions of their composition and they're not going too heavy in these uh, trades, right? They're not playing into the traps that RSGPH have set for them like they did in game number one. And this is starting off quite good for the first four minutes of the game. And even in the lane, right, we do see that Benny QT has respected. Wait a second, did he get that? I think he did. If I saw correctly, he was able to secure that. And that means that RSG has a little bit of priority in the bottom lane to contest this turtle. They're actually going to give up a little bit of gold shield up top because Nibor has already started rotating over. And that means this could be a good setup. JP and Sanji, the only ones here right now. Turtle getting blitz. Implosion comes in with the Sacred Hammer. Only catches light, though. That's not going to be enough along with the knockup. A Curse of Blood going to land means JP is taken down. Carl falls right afterwards. Double kill to the Harry. Bridget Frost doesn't catch anyone, but forces Sanford back. Does he actually live this? Nope, he's gonna explode to the Terizla. And that's three kills really quickly to RSG. That was a 4-0 trade stuff. Uh, Irad, he's a... Uh, oh. 
He was able to get that neutral objective take. He was able to get that turtle for himself. And then they win in the team fight. I don't really understand the idea that TLPH was going for with that exchange earlier on. Because they went in one by one, was taken down one by one. They were scattered. They were behind in the setup. And then they lost everything with that. That's a 2k goalie now for RSGPH. JP 100% expected to catch more people with that implosion. It seemed like RSG were so close together, but he only caught light. Basically the worst person to catch out of everyone. And then Liquid kind of committed onto it since JP had already gone in and got caught by Curse of Blood, which combos really well with the rest of RSG, which means lots of damage. Here's the thing, right? As you were talking about that, there's something about the Tigreal that requires you to have someone else in your composition that has a big crowd control skill, right? Either it be the Terizla or the Lapu Lapu or even the Ruby that was banned out earlier, right? Because with three members from the side of RG Philippines holding on to the Purify, that in itself actually is able to negate the pressure that JP is supposed to have. And when they were caught in the same position, when TLPH was caught in the same position, they at least had the Terizla. So either Terizla would open up to bait out the Purify and then JP would come in later, or vice versa. But with this composition that they brought, they don't have that much of leeway to uh, layer the CC skills to bait out this Purifies, and then we don't really find the value of the implosions anymore. You need a lot of game control and coordination, basically, to be able to force out the Purifies before the setup. <laughs> which I think RSG already were aware of. Uh, oh, oh, a beautiful dodge by Irad. Wasted Flicker Implosion. Such an important cooldown for Liquid PH is gone. There's no way they can contest this turtle anymore. I don't think they should risk it. RSG is just going to stand there menacingly and get it for free. And unfortunately, in the bottom side of the map, they went in for the clear already, right? So BenniQT couldn't even find a trade to get that tower in the bottom side. Okay, he was able to get out there with a sliver of time as uh, Hussein was able to walk into that bush. But again, right, RSG PH, they're picking up the time. They're picking up the momentum and now Team Liquid BH are scrambling for scraps. I can't believe this has turned out this way. RSG, turns out they don't need to rely on early game cheese tactics either. This draft is really clean. Gameplay is good. They know exactly what they're doing and they are slowly whittling down Team Liquid Philippines. Yeah, they're so good at understanding TLPH, right? I don't know if that's really good prep coming into this matchup or or what, right? Or they woke up and they chose violence today. <laughs> because every time TLPH go in for something to look for a trade, it feels like RSGPH, there's two steps ahead. And the fact that they've been able to play out these team fights rather perfectly with the way that they're comboing and layering their skills has been fantastic. RSGPH, what did you guys eat for breakfast today? That's what I want to know. It seems like the breakfast of champions, if you ask me, instantly concealed. They see Sam and Kaltizi out of position. They want to engage on it, but here comes JP and Sanji. RSG maybe not in the best spot, but Penalty Zone finds two. We can see Kaltizi going to be able to use that Enhanced Sword to get out. Ogi Shadow Kill doesn't quite do enough damage. Irad actually staying under the tower, maybe a bit too long. Costs him his life. Sanford onward, finds an board doesn't have the Earth Shatter follow-up. Team Liquid low, but they're able to slowly separate RSG, forcing the Flicker out from the Edith. Nibor has to get out of here. Zaman Force allows Kusei to pick off Sanford. Light also going to be picked off, and Kusei going to be shut down. This could be bad. RSG losing members left and right. Team Liquid finding the opportunity they've been waiting for. The passive on Aqua only delays his demise. And Team Liquid find four for one. Did you see Benny QT, Staffa? Did you see the way that he weaved in and weaved out of that team fight? He didn't have his Holy Trinity and he was still able to do that. Now he does though, with those many kills under his belt, with those assists under his belt, he has built in that DHS. And this could be the turning point that TLPH has waited for and has severely needed from the first nine minutes of the game. A fight like that completely resets advantages you have. And we are seeing that Team Liquid have already evened up the net worth. 
And that is what they're playing for. We already know how scary Moskov can be once he finishes those items. So RSG may have just made a massive blunder. Yeah, the Team Liquid BH, they adjusted really well, right? They understood that when things get a little bit chaotic, when these team fights get a little bit chaotic for RSG BH, when they're able to bait out these resources before they go in and commit for it, that's when they shine and that's when they come out on top and they were able to do that. So there, need to, there needs to be a way and there needs to be a situation where they can replicate that kind of success because the fact that Nibor already used his penalty zone, the fact that Aqua already used in her ultimate as well, allowed Benny QT to come into the team fight able to weave in and weave out and dish out the damage that he was supposed to have in these team fights. I don't know if Irad made like some kind of misplay as well because he just stayed under the tower for You're way right. too long. He was the first one taken out on RSG's side and that just gave a green light to Liquid to slowly edge forward. And we need to not see that again because now just with that single victory, Liquid are able to take control of RSG's jungle. They have a 3,000 gold lead now as well, right? So completely tables turns, right? The tables have turned for the side of Team Liquid BH just over that momentum. And the fact that now we can see Benny QT with the Holy Trinity. Uh, Kusei doesn't even have Holy Crystal just yet, right? He only has two items under his belt. He's on the way to it. But in these team fights, what do you think, right? Do you think that RSG Philippines still have an advantage? Uh, RSG's draft is definitely still better somewhat in terms of direct 5v5 just because of how well Carmilla, Aurora, and Hayabusa work together in terms of doing damage. But if Liquid are able to properly control their approach, we've already seen that they are able to separate RSG and take him out one by one. So it is going to be a bit of a skill matchup here. Mm. Yeah, I... I, I... I agree with you. It, it just makes this even more precarious with the way that they've set up, right? It looks like they it's not as straightforward as we would expect for TLPH. I would say that the win cons for TLPH and their composition is a lot more difficult as compared to RSGPH. Mm -hmm. So they have a little bit of homework, but it looks like Aqua's feeling it, by the way. Do you see his item? I think he went in yep. with the uh, um, movement speed boots, actually. So very aggressive build. He understands that he needs to be very... Uh, he needs to think about the way that he positions in these team fights a lot better. And then he goes in for Sky Piercer on top of everything. He's the one in charge of stifling momentum on the enemy side. And as long as he's able to hit someone, Sky Piercer can proc. So having the most AoE does make sense to go for that. Though if it doesn't work out, could be greedy. Conceal gonna be used at a kind of strange timing actually. Penalty Zone catches out JP. JP on top of Light. Curse of Blood not available just yet. So Carl Deasy gonna be able to get the Lord. Zaman Force gonna be used up just to clear up the Dominator's Descent. Nibor though gonna be abandoned by himself. So Benny Cutie finishes him off. Fear of Destruction connects in the backline. Irad already picked off. JP jumping in front to stop RSG from escaping. Sacrificing his immortality to do so and getting Light in exchange. Carl! Whoa, whoa. Jumping straight into the base. That's a double kill for Carl Teasy. And he just stands there. Oh! The w Winter Crown to avoid being frozen as well. The man still got it. He does. He bought that just in time for him to evade that damage. And it looks like with four members down, DLPH are looking in for the kill. Yep, the Lord's crashing down. It's a 5v1.